prison, but she ain't going to the clouds with us no more, right? I'm like, I'm in town. What's up? She ain't going no more because she's sitting back talking about what Jesus said. Um, God said, I'm getting married on February 22nd. I'm like, you get married? <laughs> Who you get married to? Oh, I'm getting married to your brother. My brother? Uh, wait a minute. Last I heard, y'all broke up. You know, y'all went together to do all through college. Y'all broke up. Oh, oh, okay. But anyway, the wedding is February 22nd. God said so. I said, okay. Okay, Jesus. You know, I ain't never heard like this before, that you talk and you tell dates of weddings and you do this, that, and that. I watched this girl and I, I canceled my flight. I left my place full of stuff over in Las Vegas, my apartment. I canceled my flight because I said, if you said God said it's going to be a wedding, and I know my brother, I asked my brother, he's like, I don't know how my mama doing. I'm, I'm working over here. I ain't, I ain't, I ain't getting married to her. I'm going to marry my girlfriend I'm going with now whenever she want to get married. That's what my brother told me. I'm like, oh, okay. I'm canceling the flight anyway, Jesus, because this girl, she ain't, she ain't crying. She ain't worried. Her, her mama going along playing the wedding like the groom is in place. So I said, well, let me cancel my flight and just watch this thing. Then I started going to this church that she said that God talks to you on a daily basis, you know. Because I was raised in church, but I didn't know nothing about God really do speaks to us in 2011. Amen. Amen. And so Amen. I started watching all of them. Really, God, God speaking to you? Okay. So I started hanging out. She's like, oh, yeah, by the way, you want to be in the wedding? I'm like, <laughs> my brother said he don't be in the wedding. But okay, me and my oldest daughter, Tamika, we'll be in the wedding. Let me be the flower girl. Y'all know what? They had me making wedding flowers. And I didn't even never made wedding flowers before in my life. She had me so convinced that God said this, that, and that. I made some wedding flowers. And they were so beautiful. And I, I know I didn't do them, but the Holy Spirit came upon me and did those flowers. They were so beautiful. And the wedding it had lots of girls on each side and stuff. And here it is the week of the wedding. Now, I remember my apartment back in Las Vegas is full of all this electronic stuff. With my boyfriend I was shacking up with. Because I'm watching this, this thing play out, what Jesus said going to happen. So I stayed. And it's the week before the wedding. And it's time to have that counseling thing with the with pastor. Because they don't book the church and everything. Book the hall and everything. Book the hall, book the nice hall, full of beautiful stuff for the wedding, but no room. And so I said, well, it's getting close. I'm going to watch this thing. The week of the wedding, my brother said he was over in his apartment over out of town because he wasn't even here. She had moved back here because she had great up family. She moved back here, had started attending on Northern World Church. And so I'm here watching her, you know, going everywhere with her because I ain't had no car. I'm here visiting, going everywhere with her. He said the week of the wedding, he was sitting on the edge of his bed. He got a visitation from the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. Stop by the visit. He said he had never experienced anything like that in his life. And make a long story short, he called everybody over here and said the Lord had visited him. And he was more excited about her. And he went down to like the last few days before the wedding now. He got over here and got the, um, had, did the counseling thing, and, you know, because he was raised in church also. And at the wedding, he was crying like a baby, and he was more excited than she was. And I was able to go back to Las Vegas, prepare me for what I was getting ready to walk into. And watching that, of course, I wanted more of what I saw Amen. and heard saying God Amen. spoke to me. Amen. And watching that thing come to pass, Make a long story short, we've been married about almost 20 something years now. <laughs> we've been married 20 something years. They both are um, educators, teachers in the school system. Um, but me, she works downtown, so she's something, she's something else downtown. She started teaching the schools, but now she got an office downtown, so she do something else downtown. I think she's like over the principals of certain district of the schools. Yeah, that's, that's what she do. Um, they have two children, a total of three, with his one that he had already had before. Um, he's an associate pastor at a Northern World Church. He's preaching the gospel, sold out to the Lord since the day the Lord met him in that room. Got a hold of him. He went from drinking, beating up folks, to he ain't beat up nobody. All the drinking, just, just all that stopped because the Lord spoke to him on her standing on God's word. 
I watched that, and that started me to where I am today. That how, that's how they got that. That hooked me. That was the hook that hooked me. So when I went back to Las Vegas, as I witnessed the wedding, I got on the plane, went back to Las Vegas. I get to my place, and it is totally empty. I mind you, all my jewelry, I had like so much jewelry, all my, everything was gone. Place is empty. But guess who still was hanging around? My shaking up boyfriend. Could you believe after all that he still was there? Tell my somebody I broke into the place and took all my stuff. Nobody broke in. He took all my stuff and then came back to act like nothing ever happened. And so I said to his mama, um, yeah, my stuff is gone. And I, I promise y'all, I had to witness such a beautiful thing here. Amen. Had to learn so much through that watching that wedding plans here about God. That's how it's got me to where I am today now. I didn't even care about that stuff. All I said to his mother, because we both was grown, he was older than I was. All I said to his mother, I, I heard that your son should not be in this house with me. We shouldn't be shaking up. I, I heard that. You know, I learned that when I was away at church. I was visiting my friend's church in Tampa. And she was like, oh, I just can't believe you go away and you come back and my son cannot stay with you anymore. No, he can't stay here. I didn't say he can't, you know, he just, he can stay at your house. But she didn't want him back at her house because they knew more about their they relative, their son, and what he was going through. See, I, they, they always say, Rose, you're just so naive. See, I didn't know you could look at some eyes on a person, Pastor. I didn't know you could look at the eyes and tell they hot yeah. or they on drugs or something. Yeah. I, I promise y'all, I saw this look on this guy oh, while I was dating him. Never even knew. And, my, and Tamika's dad, my ex-husband, told me, he said, oh, I seen your boyfriend. And he, he, he said something about basin. I don't even know what that means. But he said, your boyfriend, I knew he was basin. Like, what? But I, and I still don't know what basin means, or, or, but I know it means some kind of drug. Correct. It means crack? Okay. Okay, well, look, his eyes was um like a hazel green or something. So I was always on, oh, his eyes so pretty. His eyes looked so good. I thought it was like, you know, the contact lens be wearing and stuff. I thought that's why his eyes was like that. But really, the whole world I was dating him. The guy took all my stuff because he was on drugs. That's why his stuff was gone. That's why my stuff was gone. And see, his mama got mad at me when I came back and I found Jesus. When I said, oh, I don't care about the stuff. I forgive him for taking the stuff because I found something better than that stuff. Yeah. I have found Jesus. Yeah. And you just can't lay in my house. She said, well, he can sleep on the couch. No, ma'am. He can't even come through the door no more, ma'am. And she didn't understand how do you just get off a plane and put somebody out just like that? I'm saying you don't understand. I got a revelation that Jesus never go to sleep, never slumber. Amen. So if I'm still in this house with him shacking up, he looking. He's seeing everything we're doing. So I was trying to get that across to the, to the lady, but she was like, well, I go to church and up. See, she knew her son had had them problems with the drugs. Amen. That's why she didn't want him there. And then the whole family was glad he found me and was dating me. Because we had dated for months. Never even knew. I promise y'all didn't know. Didn't have a didn't have a clue. But all my jewelry, I had like the nugget, what I had I had all this jewelry. Diamonds and pearls and all of it. Gone. But I didn't care. I told him, I forgive you. Yeah. Amen. I forgive you because I got to get in this world. I got to find out more about this person that has forgiven me. Yeah. And I got, that's how, that's how I am today. I got into my Bible and learned more about this God that forgives me. Yeah. And I never looked back. Yeah. I never let him back through that door. Yeah. As a matter of fact, he tried to sleep on the balcony. On my outside, outside the door on the balcony. <laughs> He's trying to sit on the balcony. So I said, nah, that's a little too close to my door. You stay, you gotta go. But forgive. Forgive. We've been forgiven a much. 
no matter how bad it 